But I'm going to organize all the major races, all the major ethnic groups based on bodybuilding genetics, right? If you easily offended, if you're sensitive, do not watch this video. Like I always say, just dislike it and get fucking lost, right? The difference between people, the difference between populations is fascinating. It's pure biology to me, right? Humans are just fucking animals, right? We all have differences and that's fucking fine. That doesn't mean one group is better. That doesn't mean one group is worse. It's all relative. It all depends on where we evolved, right? Also, when I say, when I talk about a race, guys, that doesn't mean every single person that falls into that race, that falls into that category is going to have that phenotype. No, it just means on average. I'm West African, I have shit genetics, whereas my sister has great genetics, right? But I think that everyone can just take steroids and look like Ronnie Coleman or everyone can just train hard enough and make it to the Olympics, right? Genetics play a huge role, a huge role in performance. Same thing with steroids, right? So get out here with that whole, just train hard and you're going to make it to the Olympic bullshit. You should use genes as an excuse to not work hard, of course, right? That's definitely not what I'm saying. It's all about a combination of genes and environment. A pygmy can train as hard as he wants. He's not going to be a center in the fucking NBA, right? So he's not going to win a fucking marathon anytime soon. I don't want to see any fucking hypocrite in my comment section. You guys know what I'm talking about. The guys who want to blame everything on fucking systemic racism and the moment you point out a difference between races, oh, it has to be because of racism. Fuck off, right? Based on the scientific literature. So number one, acting in three, genetic profile. Number two, myostatin deficiencies, the frequency of myostatin deficiencies within that population. Number three, androgen receptor expression. Number four, fast twitch fiber proportion. And number five, skeletal structure, right? These are the five main things. Number one, European. And again, I'm clumping them together, right? But we obviously know it's different. Uh, many ethnic groups within the Europeans. But again, European as one big group. As far as bodybuilding genetics, uh, they go in fucking amazing. Decent acting in three profile. Decent amount of mouth stand deficiencies. Only downside is the skeletal structure. You guys know because of Bergman's rule. So it's going to be very hard to find people with really, really uh, small waist. You're going to find some, but in low frequencies. Right? People like Chris Bumstad, those are very, very rare. But when it comes to putting on mass, Europeans can get big as shit. Once again, when it comes to just putting on mass and getting strong as fuck. Mainly because of their bone structure. Next, East Asians. Whew, you guys are going to hate me for this, but you guys know I got to stay objective. Um, on average, East Asians tend to have bad genetics for bodybuilding. Right, They have great genetics for power and strength, um, but not so good for bodybuilding. Right, They don't have a lot of... In fact, they have the actin in 3 profile out of the major ethnic groups. They don't have a lot of milestone deficiencies. They have some, but not a lot relative to the other groups. They have very, very, very low androgen receptor expression. They have a good skeletal structure, though. Evolution comes with trade-offs, right? They have the highest IQ, right, up there with Ashkenazi Jews. But when it comes to bodybuilding, not so much. So when you do find a jacked Asian, right, that has a great bodybuilding physique, he's one in a fucking trillion. I'm exaggerating. South Asian genetics. South Asian genetics are some of the worst for bodybuilding, right? Southern India and the whole region, right? Most South Asians are born with very, very low muscle mass, right? It's mainly due to repeated famines and things like that, and evolutions to the environment. Again, I'm going to make a whole video on that. I have some of the highest uh, cases of what we like to call skinny fat syndrome, right? right? Even their response to anabolic steroids is bad, right, on average. All right, next, you have, whew, fucking amazing, right? This is Middle East genetics, right? So anyone in North Africa that mixed with European, that mixed with African, uh, East African, West African, that mixed with some Asian genes. I mean, they have literally the best of both worlds. Blacks mainly because of uh, the small proportion of West African genetics that they actually have. All right, next we have Native American. Very hard to find a literally like 100% Native American bodybuilder. So these guys have some of the worst, if not the worst genetics. Uh, for bodybuilding good for endurance but bad for bodybuilding and once again again this is all an adaptation uh to the environment that had to evolve in remember genes that make you good at certain things tend to make you bad at other things evolution does not discriminate a mixed european mixed african oh they got fucking amazing genetics galore for days right african-american is about 20 to 25 percent european australian aboriginal it's very, very hard to find an Aboriginal bodybuilder, right? Blah, 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 blah. They're down here, right? East Africans, on average, have some shit bodybuilding genetics, right? Again, on average, right? So mostly 
Kenya, Ethiopia, um, because they have the best genetics in the world for endurance, right? Very, very, very uh, skinny ectomorphic build. So again, that's why they dominate literally 90% of marathon events, right? A good actin in three profile though. Very good actin in three profile because again, Sub-Saharan Africa dominates when it comes to actin in three. But as far as fast switch fibers, skeletal structure, and all the other stuff, they don't rank that high. Polynesians have great genetics for bodybuilding uh, when it comes to putting on muscle. So they get big as fuck, right? So you got to have a small waist. These guys go in the okay category. So as far as getting big, putting on a ton of muscle, these guys are at the top of the charts. They're very endomorphic. They put on fat faster than any other race on the planet. But it's a combination of muscle and fat. And they also have very, very dense bones, very wide waists, very wide hips. So that's the perfect race for football, rugby. You already know what they go. I'm about to nut category. The best genetics on the planet, on the planet, while keeping a small waist and staying lean, goes down to West Africans, right? West Africa dominates when it comes to the number one when it comes to acting in three profile especially Nigerians, people from Ghana, and people from the Cameroon. When the Human Genome Project was completed, scientists finally were able to understand why these guys dominate all the sprinting events, all the athletic events as far as jumping, and anything that, that, anything that involves fast switch muscles, so bodybuilding. But it also comes with side effects, right? So again, high cases of low hemoglobin, high cases of sickle cell trait, and due to the adaptation to resist malaria and to combat a lot of tropical diseases, they also have some of the lowest IQ in the entire world with immune system and extremely fast muscular and sexual development at the expense of brain development. So the average West African kid has a very powerful immune system, very, very, very early maturation, high testosterone levels. They reach puberty extremely fast. But again, that's the body trying to combat the high death rate due to tropical diseases. But like I mentioned earlier, there's also some differences, right? That doesn't mean every West African has low IQ, right? For example, the Igbo tribe from Nigeria have some of the highest IQ in the fucking world, right? So they're always exceptions, right? So they're always outliers. But anyway, I'm going to make a whole video on IQ. The reason why I'm hesitating is because it's such a sensitive topic. YouTube is going to shadow ban the fuck out of me once I make a video on IQ. Because you guys already know, YouTube is ran by far left liberals. But the moment you say anything about the differences between people, they start shadow banning. Yeah, I see you in the comment section.